Hello friends, this video on biomolecules part 11 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now again, proteins can be of different types. They, they can be alpha amino acids, beta amino acids, gamma amino acids. So let us see what are they. Now depending upon the relative position of amino group with respect to the carboxyl group, Depending upon where the amino group is located with respect to the carboxyl group, we can classify amino acids as alpha, beta, gamma, delta and so on. So let us see what is an alpha amino acid. So how do we classify them? Now let us suppose this is your carboxyl group. So wherever you have the carboxyl group, just forget about that carbon atom. The next carbon atom which is attached immediately to the carboxyl group. So here this is your carboxyl group COOH. This is your carboxyl group. Now which is the carbon which is directly attached to the carbon of the carboxyl group? This carbon. So this carbon is your alpha. So now here let us take the second amino acids example. So where is your carboxyl group? This is your carboxyl group. Now which carbon is directly attached? to the carbon of the carboxyl group, this carbon. So this is your alpha carbon. Let us take this example here. This is your carboxyl group. So which is the carbon directly attached to this carbon? This one. So this is your alpha carbon. So this carbon is alpha. Now the carbon which is attached directly with the alpha carbon, that is beta. So this is your beta. So here again, this is your beta. And the carbon which is directly attached to the beta carbon, that is your gamma. So this is your gamma. So here you don't have a gamma carbon. Here again you don't have a beta or gamma carbon. Now the amino acid where the amine group is connected to the alpha carbon is known as alpha amino acid. So here since the amino group is connected, this is your amino group and this is connected to the alpha carbon. So it is alpha amino acid. In this case, this amino group is connected to the beta carbon. So it is beta amino acid. In this case, the amino group is linked to the gamma carbon. So it is gamma amino acid. And this is <coughs> this will continue. So it, similarly, the next carbon atom will be known as delta. And if your amino group is connected to the delta carbon atom, it will be known as delta amino acid. So that means amino acids can be classified in this fashion, alpha, beta and gamma amino acids. So only alpha amino acids are obtained on hydrolysis of protein. So this is one very important point to be noted here. So whenever we talk about hydrolysis of proteins, we say that proteins are the complex structures formed. So on hydrolysis, the monomers will be formed. That is those compounds of which it is made up of will be formed. Now, please note that only alpha amino acids are formed. No beta amino acid, no gamma, no delta, nothing. So only alpha amino acids, only amino acids of this type will be formed on hydrolysis of proteins. You still remember hydrolysis, right? Because we have already explained that. You will add water to break proteins into its constituent amino acid. So here you can see this is your alpha amino acid. This is the carbon of the carboxyl group. So this is alpha carbon and from here the amino group is connected. So this is your alpha amino acid. So basically this is how it is represented here. This is your uh, amine group. This is your carboxyl group. And here you have an R group. What is this R group? This R group is nothing but the alkyl group. So this is your alpha amino acid. So this is how the structure looks like. So how do we name the amino acids? Let us have a look. Now all amino acids have trivial names which usually reflect the property of that compound or its source. Now it is very difficult to remember the names of all the 20 amino acids because they do not follow a pattern basically. Some of them are named depending upon some of their properties. Some of them are named depending upon the substance from which it was discovered for the first time. So that way is it differs. So different amino acids have got different names which are quite difficult to remember. For example, there is an amino acid named glycine. So why is it named glycine? Because the term glycos is a Greek word which means sweet. 
and this amino acid has a sweet taste so that is why it is called glycine so this is the structure of glycine again there is another amino acid which is called tyrosine so this is called tyrosine because tyros is again a greek word which means cheese and it was first time it was obtained from cheese that is why it was named tyrosine so this is how the structure is this is tyrosine again there is so that means the names of amino acids are quite complex so now what how do you remember the names because every time glycine tyrosine alanine arginine so they are not very easy to remember so and in fact they are not very easy to represent them also but again amino acids are very very important so you need to represent them you need to deal with them so what can be done so they were represented they are represented by a three letter symbol sometimes one letter symbol is also used now instead of writing the entire name glycine we just write three letters which will represent glycine sometimes they also follow a one letter convention where maybe the first letter say g will represent glycine again if tyrosine so three letters also you can use maybe tyr or you can use just one letter so we will show you i'll show you the list of all 20 amino acids and their three letter symbol as well as their one letter symbol so it is a convention whichever you want to follow you want to use three letter symbol you can do that you want to follow the one letter symbol you can do that as well so let us look at the list of the 20 amino acids so now these are the 20 alpha amino acids. Now one interesting thing to think about here is how are these 20 amino acids formed? How these amino acids are different? Because as I said, any generic amino acid will be somewhat like this. So this will have a carboxyl group, COOH. Since it is alpha carbon, so this is going to be your alpha carbon. So here, is going to be NH2 that is the amine group here and this carbon will have H on one side and the alkyl group on the other side now see here everything else this carboxyl group will remain as it is for all the alpha amino acids the amine group will also remain the same for all of them this hydrogen will also remain the same for all of them so what will change this alkyl group so this alkyl group will change for each of these amino acids so for all of them only the alkyl group is different now since the alkyl group is different the entire structure becomes different and that is why you have so there are 20 different alkyl groups that can exist and that is why you have 20 different alpha amino acids now these are the 20 amino acids now here you would have seen that in most of the cases not all the three letter are the first three letters for example alanine it is ala arginine it is arg aspirin however it is not asp because there are two amino acids with the first three letters same this is aspirin this is aspartic acid so if you put asp both of them cannot be asp so one of them is asn and the other one is asp so this is how it is Preferably if there is no repetition, it is the first three letters, but if there are two uh, amino acids with the same first three letters, in that case, you make a change. Similarly, the one letter is preferably the first letter, but in case you have too many amino acids with the same letter, in that case, you follow a different letter. Like here for alanine it is A, therefore for arginine it is R, for asparagine it is N, for aspartic acid it is D. So randomly some a different letter has been taken. Because anyways there are 20 amino acids, 20 amino acids and we have 26 alphabets. So you can put one alphabet for each of them which is unique, which will not get repeated. So now some people follow the three letter convention to represent them, some of them follow the one letter convention as well. So these are the 20 alpha amino acids. Now we will not discuss the structure of each of them in detail but this is going to be the generic structure just that the alkyl group will change for each of them. However, we will discuss few of them, discuss the detailed structure of few of them. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online tests, get free study material, 
find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.